Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us here at the Lonely Draft League G Max Finals, the championship match, the decisive climax of season 11 of the Lonely Draft League. My name is Eminon. I'm joined by Jetman99, and we are here with two of the best players within the LDL, the Blazing Squid and Preston, or the Toronto Toto Dial and the Neo Show Necrozma. Jetman, this is going to be a, a really fun match, but before we go over that, we have some some housekeeping to uh, to talk about with some of our other our, our other we divisions do. here. We do for so. sure. So, uh, you will, as I mentioned in the LDL Z Move uh, finals match that occurred on Thursday, uh, I did say that there was going to be a D Max match. But lack of my knowledge, uh, there was a recording issue on our end that I was unaware of and was not told about when I asked the video to be sent to me. So basically, uh, Squid and uh, Zemanon, he joined, joined, they joined the match. Then about eight turns in, they got kicked, and then they and then they were uh, and then they were um, uh, and then they were unable to get back in. So Zemanon here ha does have the results for you here to tell you all now, but be before we get going into this match. Yes, so uh, since we didn't get the recording though, but we have it, you know, the official result is that our DMAX champion is high and the um, <laughs> and the Fort Wayne Durant. He actually won 3-0 over BBK, which is the uh, Brick Breaking Crooked Isles, which uh, they seem like they actually had some some pretty fun matchups there. So high takes that win and wins the wins the DMAX division. And he is going to get uh, $15, I believe, for winning the regular season as well as the $5 for the MVP because he had the MVP Pokemon on his yeah. team. Correction, he will, right? actually, he will actually get 30 for winning the whole season. Oh, okay, my bad. I got I got you now, Jetman. So he gets 30 for winning, $15 for, for BBK, who, yeah. um, who got right. second place. And then High got the five. From or no, Aaron Aaron got five dollars for having the MVP Pokemon on his team. Gotcha, yep. gotcha. Yep. Okay, uh, and then and then and then High also gets another five dollars to rack up to thirty five dollars in total, due to the fact that he was a regular season champ. Due, I think he beat Aaron out by like a differential. I think. Oh, okay. If I recall. So yeah. But it is what it is. All right. Uh, yeah. So one thing I will also mention: uh, so these two players, exceptional opponents, but they, but, but, but they aren't the best team in the league. It's a you and I. Let, let's be honest, okay? It's a, you and I. <laughs> let, let's be honest. Yeah. You know, I, I, I guess I was just trying to be modest with my, uh, my dreadful performance this season. I didn't really want to, you know, exactly. be, be flaunting anything. Uh, but um, so uh, we so, actually. Yeah. Sorry, go. Uh, I was going to say, we have graciously gotten footage from one of the sides of the battle here. So Jetman and I are going to be able to cast over the LDL championships for you guys today. Yes, exactly. And I, and I can promise you, this video will go no longer than half an hour. <laughs> I can promise you that. You, you've already seen the runtime, right? Yes, I have. <laughs> okay, cool. So we, we don't know the outcome, but we know the runtime. So this video is not going to be any more than a half hour. So I say we get we get started now as these guys are yes. are finding each other and selecting their Pokemon. So again, it's the Blazing Squid versus Preston. The Blazing Squid, one of the most storied members of LDL history with two two GMAX championships, I believe multiple uh, uh, minor so league championships as well. Uh, so he hasn't won a minor league, but exact, but funny fact, uh, uh, Blazing Squid is actually the founder of, of LDL. Oh, yeah, so, so that's why he's so good. LDL, yes. He gets but, the power up. Yes, exactly. But, uh, but starting here, so as you can see, uh, so the Blazing Squid has uh, has Gigalith, Excadrill, Braviary, Necrozma, Frostmoth, and Dracovish. Whereas his uh, opponent here, Rin, uh, also known as Preston, has uh, the Mew, Heliolisk, Claydol, Ferrothorn, Haxorus, and Primarina. Well, I'd also like to add on for Preston uh, that he actually has a VGC background. Uh, so him and I played VGC together. Uh, and we were also in the, I forget what we called it because it wasn't the DMAX at the times. Uh, it was, uh, oh, we yeah. were in the minor leagues together. Uh, and we actually both ranked up to to G Max together, so 
that was that was fun. So I've known Preston for a couple of years now, and he's a, a very good battler, very calculated battler, though. So he definitely uh, he definitely doesn't take many risks. I would argue. I think uh, he plays very safe, and I think that's like I, I mean that in a complimentary way. Like I think yeah. he doesn't make any boneheaded decisions that I do when I go for bad plays and, and they don't work out. I think uh, Preston. That's why he's in the finals here, and I'm casting it instead. Yes, exactly. Uh, so so the league you're talking about was. Was actually first called the LDL Evolution. LDL Evo. Yes, that's right. Evo League with I, my Mega yes, Swamper. Basically, so I so I can still picture the logo in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get started here. Necrozma for Preston, um, or excuse me, for for Blazing Squid. Sorry about that. Just because it's the Neo Show, Necrozma is Preston's team. So Toronto Toted Isles on the bottom of your screen. Blazing Squid, bottom of your screen. Ferrothorn and Preston, or the Neo Show Necrozma, are on the top of your screen. A, a defensive start for for both of these trainers. I expect maybe they trade Stealth Rocks, or uh, maybe the Necrozma switches out into something else. But no, he actually has a tech move right off the bat with the Heat Wave. Ferrothorn taking around seventy percent of its HP from that. No Stealth Rock on Ferrothorn. Instead, it is the Leech Seed, which does connect onto the Necrozma. That's a big reveal. Turn one. Yes, it is for sure. Uh, so I feel like Squid there just with just went with the attacking move, no knowing that knowing that he had the best play option here to just go for attacking. The most he could take was possibly a uh, toxic, but 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 I don't think he was too worried about that from the Ferrothorn. Yeah, that was that was really um, you know I'm I'm so interested to see what people what trainers bring in a finals match because obviously they played each other one time earlier this season uh, so they have the experience not not just of playing each other throughout the years but specifically with these two teams so the extra drill is actually going to switch into the Necrozma slot as Pre Marina switching in on Preston's end so uh, I think that's actually that was actually a nice call from. Uh, from Preston there because now he can try to hit it with like Hydro Pump or, uh, you know, another type of even Scald if he has it. Yes, agreed. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so as, as you said earlier, Preston is a very calculated player. Earthquake Ooh. from Extra Gerald into the Pre Marina. A one hit KO. Is there a critical hit? No, there is no critical hit. That is just a straight up ko is that a choice banded extra drill to be able to to pull off that feed or does that pre-marina have absolutely no bulk to it yeah uh, so i do know that pre-marina has base 60 defense I, i'm pretty sure so but i but i for one did not expect that eq to kill so he i would assume that he would have to be choice banded for sure there yeah i th i think so because oh, if I and and you know how Preston plays, you know his like you know calculated measures that he just lost one of his defensive pivots in Pre Marina here for essentially nothing. As obviously he brings out a, a Levitator in, in Claydol, who you know shout shout out to Claydol, who was on my team for seventy percent of the season and, and goes from like worst to first, ends up at the championship when I, I wasn't able to really accomplish anything with Claydol. Yep, so looking here now, so these two first faced off in week two and it and it actually finished off as a four four match. Now if Oh I that's call, right. Call I think it came down to Squid winning it. If so I... the reflect from Claydol, uh we we don't know if it's like if it's like clay yet, because we haven't seen like leftovers recovery or anything like that. So who knows if these reflect and light screens will be activated for eight turns instead of five. I think that actually makes a lot of sense considering how Preston likes to really flesh these games out. Uh, but that bug buzz is super effective, but thanks to the light screen, it really it doesn't even do like 30% to clay doll i know i have fallen victim jetman to squid's frost moth this season yes. where i definitely i definitely did not respect it the way i should have and he just destroyed me here so let's hope that preston has a better answer for this frost moth who could potentially go off Mew switching into the clay doll slot and frost moth showing off that pivot of it option with the u-turn obviously not going to do a lot of damage since he's a special attacker uh but mew is that's exactly what mew wanted because that will activate the weakness policy boosting its attack and special attack by two stages each that is huge for preston there because i would assume that preston would also have rock polish on 
on, on this new set. Just for that exact gigalith, uh, just exactly for that gigalith combo with the extra drill, with the possible sand rush pairing there. So if Preston is ever gonna for free rock polish with this new, I would I it's gonna be a big challenge for Squid to try and over uh, overcome this. Right, Necrozma switching in for Blazing Squid. Obviously, would be able to take any psychic attacks pretty well from Mew. But remember this, if he does have the Rock Palace, Mew is essentially safe to set up because Light Screen and Reflect are both up on Preston's side. So it's really not, and especially from the Necrozma, uh, it's really not in danger of being knocked out in one hit at this point. So this might be preston's win condition uh obviously since he switched the mew in very offensively there i think he knows that this is mew's moment to really take advantage in this match yes sure exactly so so i wonder what he's going to try and do here to try and be able to counter this goes to the bug buzz Ooh, does about 50 percent there off with crit crit oh, wow. that was a critical hit too that's uh that's crazy it lowers his special defense not like it would matter since uh <sighs> since it would actually, it would not get anyway. But the trick root from Necrozma, Blazing Squid actually baiting out the Rock Polish from Mew, and instead he does not click it. He actually actually goes for the Bug Buzz. Interesting that uh, a plus two Bug Buzz, I know it's not Stab, but uh, it actually, it still did that little. It just shows maybe how defensively trained this Necrozma is. Uh, and Brick Break from Necrozma, he also called the screens here, getting rid of Lake Screen and Reflect on his on Preston's side. Another bug buzz, though, into the Krasma will take it down, and we are down to five Pokemon each for each of these trainers. So uh, that Necrozma obviously didn't take any knockouts, but it put in a lot of work in this set. Yeah, so my thing is, does he now go into the Gigalith? So basically, I think his whole team is slower than the Mew here. If the Mew is a Rock Polish set, meaning that it would be running 252, 252, uh, modest timid set so uh pretty, i'm pretty sure the whole the squid's whole team here does outspeed the mew in trick room so squid is safe to go into any mon he feels can okay the mew easily here and squid deciding that his trusty dracovish that he's used for two seasons in a row now in in the ldl is is the answer from for mew this actually makes me think that obviously it wouldn't be choice scarfed in this scenario um because you're slower or right now trick room is on the field so you want to be slower uh so you might be actually giving away that information for free onto preston's side uh, a vicious rend, obviously, with Choice Band or, or anything else is going to do massive damage here. And it's actually just going to clean, get the knockout. I really wonder what Preston's idea was. Did he did he just see Mew potentially as uh, like kind of like done with this matchup? Like it wasn't going to be his win condition anymore because, you know, maybe he might have wanted to save that for later once Trick Room was gone. Now, now that Necrozum was knocked out, you know that Trick Room is not going to be able to get up later. Um, yeah. But instead, now he's going to have to switch in his, his Ferrothorn and, uh, and eat another attack. Yeah, so I would even say that Preston decided to sack Mew there due to the fact that the Twigens policy was gone and there was, and there was nothing else needed for it in the end. Stealth Rocks from the Ferrothorn will end up on Blazing Squid's side of the field. And a Super Fang from Dracovish will actually connect into the Ferrothorn, doing a little bit of iron barbs damage there. I wonder how much the uh I wonder how much the Ficious Ren does. Maybe Squid was expecting the attack to come out from Ferrothorn, which would actually negate the the Ficious Ren boost because he would have been hit first. Uh, but yeah. instead he actually would have had the full powered uh, Fish just right on that turn. It's just, you know, instead he went for kind of a, a neutral play in, in Super Fang. It is so. Does Fish and Run do. Uh, so, does, so does Fish and Run work like that? So if you don't get it. So, so, so damage isn't dealt to you first. You Correct. Get full power? Wow, that is. It, it, it doubles its power. Right. That so is, that's why Choice Scar for like having yeah, him under Tailwind or something like that yeah, is so good. Yeah. But I always thought that because the Stealth Rocks went up first, then the power would be normal BP and not doubled instead. I I'd have to check it again, but I believe it says if it if it hasn't been attacked or something like that. I could be wrong, but I'd, I'd have to definitely check it again. I can okay. I can pull that up as we're looking here. Is this there might be a couple of a uh, couple of easy turns here. 
spectra of uh, defensively from the Gigalith and the Ferrothorn. Yes, uh, sorry, I'm actually shocked that Squid has brought up the Gigalith here against the Ferrothorn, knowing that a Power Whip or a Iron Head can do a significant amount to the Gigalith here. But as we know with Squid, he always has a play up his sleeve to try and use against his opponent. So I'm curious as to see what what this are going to do here, and wh and whether or not Preston will swap out into a, into a different mod, trying to keep his Ferrothorn as healthy as possible, knowing that he will need it for a pivot later on against the. Uh, Gigalith with the stealth rocks here wants to wants to stay in and actually gets rewarded for it on Squid's end because he goes for a knockoff, revealing the eject button, which was a nice tech from from Squid. I know he's been he's been using his Gigalith masterfully the entire season there, um, so it's not going to have the eject button anymore, but uh, avoids the potential power whip at this point. Uh, gets gets the stealth rocks up for free, and now can go for the very strong body press into the Ferrothorn. Yes, indeed, for sure. Body press should be doing fifty percent roughly, and that's I'd say that's around the forty percent range roughly. So. But there will be iron barbs though into the Gigalith. Uh, uh, so Ferrothorn actually opting for Leechy instead, calling calling a switch on Squid's end. That's what Preston was going for. He assumed maybe he switches out into like Braviary or something else on, on the team. So I'm going to go for Leech Seed again. But Gigalith has already been been hit by the Leech Seed. So uh, a pretty wasted turn out of Ferrothorn. Yes, sure. Uh, so indeed, so does so does Preston sack here or does he uh, stay in? And Gigalith was, was faster, so it does swap out first. Runs in the Braviary. There's the Braviary now. I'm going to take 25% from the Stealth Rocks. And now Ferrothorn switching out doesn't want to take the risk of being knocked out. Instead, Claydol will be the option for uh, for Preston's side. He can potentially just go for a Reflect again this turn. Uh, I wouldn't really expect Claydol to have too much that would really work well against Braviary in this scenario. Uh, obviously, it can have Power Gem, uh, which is a nice a nice coverage but i i actually don't know how often he'd want to he'd want to run that but brave bird from the braviary into claydol brings it down into the red not enough for a knockout does put braviary at 50 percent of its hp though just about and reflect from the uh from the claydol will will negate a lot of the damage from squid's physical attackers which are a lot of his team extra drill gigalith braviary you know, uh, Dracovich, that's a, that's a lot of damage being negated. Yes, it is for sure, indeed. So, uh, these two here, as you can see, are formidable opponents, and they are they are essentially giving it their all, doing the best they can, with, with in the 20-minute timer that we have here, due to the fact that Preston's moving house recently was, was unable to get the land set up. But, again, we see the Trick Room play here. From the clay doll, uh, two matches in a row, opting for one side of the one, one side of the field to have that trick room tech, the slow mo momentum passing. So I so I really wonder what Preston's going to try and bring out here against this powerful Dracovish. Well, he's definitely going to need to have something slower than it, right? At this <laughs> at this point, if he if he set it up for for this scenario. Um, I guess he might not be really too worried about Dracovish because, like, the Ficious Ren doubled attack is kind of equaled out by the Reflect making attacks like fifty percent. If you get, if you kind of understand what I'm, I'm saying there, like, kind of makes the, it kind of essentially makes the damage back to a neutral amount here. Uh, and I think Ferrothorn makes a lot of sense. It would resist Ficious Ren. He would actually attack first, so he can opt for that Leech Seed or for a straight up, you know, Power Whip if if he wants here. Uh, I think it would definitely. I think it would make it would make sense potentially, but from what I just saw, I actually get locked in on 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 Squid's side because uh, Squid's on the bottom. Uh, the Dracovish put went for substitute. He's actually faster, and so if Ferrothorn goes for a Leechy here, he's going to get punished. No, Preston with the knockoff instead into the Dracovish. Not enough to break the sub on Dracovish. That is actually crucial 
for Blazing Squid here because now he now Preston's going to have to take another turn getting trying to attack the Dracovish instead of going for Leech Seed or Protect or something else that the Ferrothorn wants to do. A Super Fang from Dracovish will bring Ferrothorn down to around 30% of its HP, but we'll take a little bit of Iron Barbs for its trouble here. Second knockoff from the Ferrothorn into the Dracovish substitute will finally fade here uh, as Dracovish will recover up more from its leftover. So really didn't really did not take too much damage at all, considering uh, he got the leftovers from after the iron barb. Indeed. So I would even say that Squidish, uh, Squid here is free to go for it, to go for another substitute, knowing that a knockoff cannot take it out and that it'll basically get a free sub up. No, no matter what here. Heliolisk is the switch in for Preston as it will take a little bit of damage from Stealth Rocks, but the substitute super free sub, sub on Dracovish on this end. Now Heliolisk is going to have to take a turn going for Thunderbolt or something like that but, onto the Dracovish to try to to knock it out. But, uh, you know, there was really nothing Preston could do to stop that sub. Exactly, but in saying that, there is a Heliolisk dry skin because if it is dry skin, oh. it basically can as the, the ferrothorn as barring it doesn't have another physical uh, attacking move on it because because i think we've seen the fish of rain sub and super fang so far so. right so that's that definitely is a, a a neat trick that heliolis brings like utility to like water teams also to, to sun uh or not sun teams to sand teams i believe i, I think he just has a lot of utility right uh, yes so Helolisk uh, has dry skin it has solar power and it has sand bail right so it definitely it definitely likes being on a draft league team that has some weather in the game yeah, um indeed. but this frost moth is now down to around a third of its hp remaining Helolisk would be faster than it so instead squid is going to switch out frost moth into the gigalith who might be able uh, I was going to say it could take the hit better, but look how low Gigalith is, especially after the Stealth Rocks. Uh, this will bring it down to the point where pretty much any attack Heliolus brings out will knock it out. But importantly, Gigalith will set up the Sand Stream before it is KO'd. Uh, so Gigalith taking that trade. So now that Extra Drill can come in for free and have the Sand Rush up. Perfect timing as Reflect wears off. So Squid gambling correctly that Claydol did not have the the light clay item there to boost uh, or lengthen the amount of reflect and light screen, and instead only the five turns. And now Extra Drill can can come in here and go for an earthquake. But but, but is the or clay, not? But is the Claydol still alive? Claydol is still alive. Yes. Yes. So for Squid to go into Extra Drill and, and, and earthquake is a tough move for it to do. So. Uh, there is roughly about five minutes left on the timer in game so these two have to make quick decisions and or take a while and make the smart decisions to ensure that they have the best possible chance here because they're both current takes out so okay so choice scarf braviary was still slower than the heliolus we have only seen heliolus clip click hyper voice every turn does that mean that the heliolisk is also choice scarf there because i don't think blazes good was expecting that yeah i would assume so because choice scarf heliolisk is actually a powerful one to use because the heliolisk is a good counter to the dracovish which right. is predominantly ran choice scarf so to run choice scarf on itself uh it might also outspeed the extra drill adamant sand rush but we should see here yeah we're gonna we're gonna find out right now this is the game for squid if he cannot handle this heliolus right now he's in a very precarious position already down four pokemon to three timer is running out you want to make decisions quickly it looks like preston was really wavering on what he should do on this turn if he should just if he should figure out if heliolus gets faster or not but instead this ferrothorn is going to eat this iron head 
Uh, obviously resisted damage, but still not enough oh. to take it as this Ferrothorn goes down. There are 60 seconds left in oh. this battle. It is three Pokemon to three. Excadrill has the sand up. What can Preston do to preserve a win? Uh, so I would even bet that Preston has the upper hand here, knowing that the uh, Drakovish and Frostmoth are both below 50% health. So the only mon damaged on Preston's side is the Helo Lisk and I think a few from the Claydol. So the Haxorus, Haxorus has full HP as well, and he knows that he that this uh, this extra drill is not going to be able to knock it out with an with an Iron Head, so he can actually retaliate with an Earthquake. But in saying that, if Preston waits a fifteen seconds, he 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 will win on timer. Because oh, I'm that's right. Because the turn won't the turn won't actually go attack. through. Preston actually clicked with six seconds left. Iron Head what? into the Haxorus is a one hit KO. The clock hit zero. Blazing Squid is up three Pokemon to two. Of course, we have formalities because Preston still has to bring a Pokemon out. I think uh, for it to to actually officially end, he brings in that Clay Doll, and Blazing Squid has done it. This is. A, a battle that we thought was going to favor Preston because of the 20 minute yes. time clock actually hurts him in the end. And Blazing Squid and the Toronto Totodial are your lonely draft league GMAX season 11 champions. That's his third title, right? Yes. That, so, so your Blazing Squid is the first ever three time winner of the LDL. Wow. Uh, one thing I have to say, Preston. That is mad respect to you for, 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 for clicking an attack with, with in the timer. So, right. Big Especially, yeah, because he, he had a championship right there potentially yes. off of the HP percentages. But he actually had enough respect for the game to like play it out and thought that if he if his Haxorus hangs on just barely, he gets a knockout onto the extra drill and wins three to two. But it looked like that that extra drill was just so strong it took two one hit KOs that we were not expecting. Yeah, exactly. So oh so that that match turned out to be an exciting one for sure and it is within a thirty minute promise that I made. There we go. That's all that matters. But so we're add, adding it on here. So your Toronto Total Dials, the Blazing Squid, will win the thirty dollar prize. Uh, uh, the prize pool. Uh, then your then Preston will win the fifteen dollar runner up. Uh, and then your regular season champions, Tasmanian Toxic Croaks, uh, who had an unfortunate event happen in the in the in the semifinals leading up to this match, will win five dollars for the for the regular season MVP. And your uh, no no uh, champ uh, and then your MVP of this season is Terrakion, coached by the Albany Abomasnows. So Blaze will will get the five dollars from for the Pokemon MVP. Dude, what a what a season it's been here in the LDL jet, man. Thank you very much for letting me be a part of it and let me be on the cast for these these championship matches. They're always so exciting. But so one thing I say, every, everyone watching, please join down in the description below because there will be signups going along for in for starting in January for our season twelve, seven, and four respectively through all three of our leagues, and maybe even possibly opening up a fourth league that I haven't discussed with the mod yet. So keep that hush hush. But uh, one thing I will say, so leading up to Christmas, we. We will be doing five days of Christmas where basically every day will be a quick tournament where you yourself are able to win money to, to, to spend. Yes. So, uh, I know for myself, this is, this has been the boy from the land down under, Jetman 99, and Zeminan. This is Zeminan. Thanks for, thanks for always having me for these, Jetman. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And to everyone, uh, have a good one and peace.